Hello everybody, it's Alchemy Master McGavin. And today we are going to be doing another crafting video. We've already gone over alchemy, the uses of and process of blacksmithing, gathering materials such as stone, uh, metals, and wood. This time we're going to go over engineering with bone carving. I will go over with the processes how to find, collect bone and the process it and then of course we'll go over the actual process of actually going through the craft and creating something from the ground up so to get you started I won't be going over things like specific types of bone you should be going after um, each of those just like with blacksmithing will have a different use based on what you're looking for um, some are better at dealing with uh, blunt damage or sharp damage or claws versus bludgeoning damage itself So if you want to get specifics, you're going to want to talk to somebody who does a little bit more specialized bone carving than I do While I have delved a fair amount into engineering As you see here um, A lot of it was just from carving trinkets in the actual uh, in the, in the book, uh, I would go and just buy some bones out of the society and just work my way up from here, just passively for fun. So, starting off with tools. As per the usual, um, let's see. Let's go to the society. So, in the engineering society, we have our crafting supplies, which as we see here, are everything you'll need for tinkering, uh, stone carving, shaping, and the bone carving. For bone carving, you are going to want rifflers, rath, surface polish, a bone saw. Make sure it is a bone saw, not a wood saw. I spent a couple days bashing my head against the wall trying to figure out why my stuff wasn't working sometimes. Um, you're also going to want bleaching solution if you plan to collect your own bones. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Where is it at? Is this in some. Let me clear it to. I thought there was one more in use. Uh, That'll be it. So yeah, bone saw, rath, rifflers, scraper, and polish. You are going to want the scraper mostly for the bone cleaning as well as the solution, like I said before. If you don't, you can drop those tools and you should be okay. So, if you are broke and can't get a whole lot of the tools, but you want to get off the ground starting with uh, the engineering for bone carving, just buy a bone saw. You don't have to deal with any of the triggers that occur in screen to continue the craft like with alchemy and some of blacksmithing. You can just skip it all. Although your quality does drop, you still will get training for it and it will help you buy some time until you can get to that point as well. You will need bones. For that, those are... I don't come in here very often, unfortunately. Oops. Uh, pro shop, bookstore, crafting supplies, select all your supplies. Ah, here we go. So just east of the um, crafting supplies room, you will have the stuff that you can buy if you don't want to go out and get your own. The bone stacks that you'll be looking at is deer and wolf bones. Deer bones are a little easier to work with than wolf bone, but you can start off with the wolf and perfectly fine. They do cost a little bit, but it's not too bad, and they do work for a lot of crafting orders, especially up to early mid uh, skill. Eventually, I would suggest, especially if you plan to craft your own armor or weapons, then I would say go and gather your own supplies and make your own because then you can hunt for specific creature types you want to do damage 
in a certain form better or to reduce damage you're taking in a certain form better. On that note, um, bone carving is very good for uh, armor weapons if you're not into the metals and stuff like that but you still want something that'll look fancy. You can create furniture and uh, actually the furniture only works if you have your own home really but you can turn it in for work orders and you can make a well, pretty nice penny with it. Now if you're going to be making furniture though for your alchemy which is the only good thing engineering is for me then make sure you make it out of elf bone because then it'll be worth it. So how do you gather bone? We are going to go to the dockyards. Uh, let's see. Those are down here. And then at the dockyards is one of the first creatures you'll be hunting in general. Or, sorry, shipyard, not dockyard. Um, so a pretty easy creature to hunt as well as like goblins, but be sure to check a lanthopedia to make sure the creature you're after can be uh, harvested for bones. Some creatures cannot be harvested for, for before bones and others uh, I think can be harvested for parts, just not bones as well. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind as well that harvesting for bones they are very heavy, very, very heavy. So if your character has a big issue with encumbrance, drop off everything you can just to go and get the bones and then go from there. Um, let's see. So to hunt a creature that you want to get the bones for, you're going to do your normal combat routine. Then we are going to arrange rat for bone. You will do this until you cannot arrange it anymore. A higher skinning skill makes it easier for you to do the arrangement and also gives you better rewards in the long run. This also does train skinning to a degree as well. And then you skin. So as you see here, it says you carefully fit some rat bones in, into your bundle. So you're going to want to harvest as many rat bones as you can in, or whatever creature you plan to hunt. And then uh, um, you'll want to find a nice quiet area where you can do your work. So let's go back to the engineering shop. And we want to get some bleaching solution. So, how much is bleaching solution? Da -da 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 -da. I just saw it. There it is. So, two and a half silver. And these do have uh, use counts. So, keep that in mind. So we have 30, we can uh, make 30 sets of bones with it. And let's go to, where can we go that's quiet? Ah, I know. Okay, here's a nice quiet spot. So, the skinning level that you have while skinning the bones gives you a plus or minus to the overall durability and also based on what you're skinning with. Skinning knives are the best. However, any weapon in hand can be used for skinning, so keep that in mind. Um, 
the better your skinning is, the easier this next process will be and cause less damage to what you're after. So, you want to get bone from bundle. So we got our rat bone. And then you want to get your scraper. Now keep in mind, uh, the store bot stuff do work really, really well, but player made stuff is always better. Steel works really, really, really good if you can't afford rare metal, but it's still fairly expensive. Though the rare metals tend to have better durability and or speed. The steel's a nice little middle ground that's within affordability. So, rearrange. With the bone in one hand and the scraper in the other, the command you want to put is scrape bone with scrape careful. Now, you don't have to put the careful burp. You can leave it empty or put uh, quick. Just like with lock picking, the faster you do it, the more likely you are to fail. And in this case, you actually can damage the bone, heavily reducing durability. So be very careful with um, uh, how fast you go based on how difficult the bone is. Some creature bones are easier based on their workability I think it was others are not so it's best just to go with careful it takes longer but it's worth it and we are going to continue cleaning the bones until as it says here at the bottom the bones look as clean as you can make them this means we are done if you try to do it again which I'll do after this we won't be able to your skinning skill will also influence how fast you clean bones not just how uh, how much you uh, retain the durability of them. So if I try to clean again, the bones look as clean as you can make it. So we're good. Scraper in my uh, pack. And then we want to get our solution. And then we are going to pour solution on my bone. So bones are uh, very difficult uh, thing to deal with unfortunately you have to let them sit in your bag not in your vault or they will glitch and you won't be able to pull them out and it's a massive headache for GMs they have to sit in your bags for a specific amount of time based on your uh, on what you've hunted different creatures will drop different size bones and the size of the bone depends on how long it takes for um, uh, them the, the, the solution to come off you can pour, pour more solution on the bones to make them cure quicker but it heavily degrades the quality of your end product if you do just one pour, you actually get a bonus to quality after all is said and done. So creatures such as rats, if you have the bone in hand, which I actually should have done before I uh, decide to mess with them. If you try to count them, you won't be able to count how many bones are there. Instead, you'll see a size. The rats are small. Some creatures like the bar guests are average. And things like bears drop large bones. When cured... After two hours for rat's bones, small any small bones, you will get three bones per unit you cleaned. For bar guest, it takes three hours, but you get four bones per clean. And anything that's a bear is five hours, and you get five bones per clean. So definitely uh, keep that in mind if you're trying to keep count of what you're after, especially for the larger... Um, uh, sets, especially when you're making armor. I think you need like a hundred something s uh, bone count to make an entire set of armor, not including weapons. So, and this is all also on a Lanthopedia as well. I went through and put it in above where the bone chart is for all the bones in game in case you need to uh, uh, check that out. Now, I have some stuff on hand. Uh, I, s 
sold it? No. Wow. Okay, I goofed. Um, so the rat bones after done bleaching. You can look at them to see how long they have left. Will eventually turn into a rat bone stack. At that point, you can then combine everything together. But I was an idiot and sold my rat stack on accident. So. Oh, no, I probably threw it away. Eh, probably threw it away. Yep. So. Let's go back to the engineering society. Actually, I need to stop by the bank first to pick up some money. Go with ten silver. Ten eight. Whoops. Eight silver. Ten grain. Ten hemp. Yeah. Ten hemp. Ten hemp. Yeah. All right. So I want to get my hands on some wolf stacks. If you buy from the society, you do get 10, uh, 10 uses of bones per stack. And then let's leave and go back to our little spot. So um, I'm not entirely sure about engineering work orders as an overall, how well it gets paid. I've heard some very mixed feelings about it. People prefer the blacksmithing because of the massive payout, but the engineering work orders don't seem to be that bad either. But once again, based on the material you turn them in with and how good the material is. So, so now we have our stack. Let's put that away. And we want to get our engineering book. Whoops. Which carving? So you want to make sure you have your carving book. So I want, I'm on page 9.7. So in the index, as you see, we have a selection of uh, from the stone and bone materials, so make sure that you're actually picking the correct chapter. Index 27. And I am working with the bone comb, so I want to study my book. book in my bag. Whoops. And we get our stack. We want to get our bone saw. That is not my engineering book. Okay, now I have my engineering so we want to untie saw from my engineering belt. And we have our bone saw. And then we want to carve stack with my saw. Now that we have a item that takes it takes two pieces of material to make this comb and I had a 10 use stack. The stack will actually break and fall to my feet. So always be sure you're in a safe spot when carving because you cannot run away with stuff at your feet. Um, so a nice thing is we have upon finishing you see some discolored areas. 
So I will say to my what? Open my pack. Uh, polish. So we'll get a jar of surface polish, which is also bought at the society. And then you want to apply polish to my comb or item you're making in this case, this case being the comb. Once that round turn is done, now mine's, uh, the polish also has an item uh, count value, so you can only use it so many times. Put polish in my pack. And then we'll go back to our saw. And then we want to carve my comb with my saw. So we have no other warnings that have popped up, so we'll start carving again. Ooh, and more discoloration. Look at this dearth. Now you don't have to have a uh, belt to work with your tools. It is just less cumbersome and takes away the item count problem. You will still be weighted down by it, so. Uh, and they're a little spendy. I think last I looked, an engineering belt as of right now was around 600 plat. So you might need to work a little bit before you can actually get the belt. And once again, we want to apply polish to my comb. Now the two other things that'll show up are jagged shards and uneven, uneven surfaces. On the jagged shards, we will use rifflers, and on the uneven surfaces, we're going to use a rasp. If those pop up, I'll go over them with you, and if they don't after this one, then I will explain what to do. So nice thing is, once again, no no real mistakes. So we can carve again. Ah, awesome. Here we go. Uneven. So as I said, uneven is a rasp. So apply my rasp. And then we are going to want to take the rasp and scrape comb with my rasp. Okay. So that went pretty smoothly. And then we will bring back out our saw. Again, no problems with the sawing, so we will saw once more afterwards. Uh, we're getting there. I'm really getting used to that polish this time around. The nice thing is bone is very easy to come across and work with. You don't got to go so far out of your way like with uh, mining or lumberjacking. And there's so many creatures and stuff you can get your hands on and it does level with you. And as you clean bone, it will give you skinning progression as well. So this tends to be a little easier to collect than most of the other crafts I'd say. But unfortunately, the turnout for bone really isn't that high when it comes to usefulness. A lot of people like their steel armors and metal armors and super shiny uh, pokey sticks and everything else. They don't like beating their enemies with their dead enemies. So you won't see many people with uh, bone carving as a fun time. Oh, 
and we have another uneven uh, texture. So we want to be using the rasp again. And then like before, scrape, comb with my rasp. Now always keep your tools in good shape too. Uh, just like with anything else, you try to work with really, really bad tools, you're going to get a really, really bad product. I would suggest learning blacksmithing to train your own use in repairing your own tools. Or if you don't mind spending a little extra coin, have the clerk repair them for you. Also, if you don't have the room on hand or in your vault, the clerk will also store your tools. So. Come on, give me jagged shard. Normally, I wouldn't be saying this because I, I want it to go through as clean as possible. But for these videos, I do like um, as many mistakes to go wrong as possible so I can show you guys what to expect at least. All right, so unfortunately, this time around, um, we did not get the desired outcome. I could go through it again, but I don't want to eat up too much of your time. The one tool we didn't get to use was the rifflers. If you see anything with uh, jagged ends or jagged shards protruding from the surface, grab your rifflers after putting away your saw, and then you want to rub the item with your rifflers. Now, there's a massive problem with this, and I'm, I've made a comment in the forum chats, and I hopefully it'll get fixed semi soon. But if you try to interact with the rifflers by applying them like you're supposed to to the uh, what you're after whether you use rub uh, in this case comb with rifflers rub my comb with my rifflers or even rub my comb with rifflers if anybody has the letter M at the start of their name you will rub their shoulders and sometimes some other people too it can be extremely aggravating to do in a semi crowded room and you want to listen to a class but that one guy walks into the room who you just can't keep your hands off now, forever. It makes them very uncomfortable. It makes you very uncomfortable. It can be very annoying. And I started a few fights on my side. So please, please, please be very careful with that. Also, occasionally, if you attempt to tap the stack inside your bag to see if it's there, you might end up tapping a random person on the shoulders. This is another very irritating part of this craft so pay close attention to who's in the room and if you're uh, not keeping your hands to yourself so um, as I said before too if you really want to you can ignore that step or all the steps except for the saw but quality gets absolutely hammered all the way down like as of right now I'm I think I'm midway into um, being able to make uh, uh, these combs so I don't get a lot of the pop-ups for a lot of the uh, issues but even so I don't think my quality for my comb is that good so yeah it's only exceptional quality now mind you my tools are not absolutely top-notch and I do have the uh, the tech I do got the uh, tech for uh, accessories and then so it does bump it up some some of my uh, to lower my difficulty rating but it can still be somewhat difficult to get a nice good uh, quality unless you create the stuff yourself and have some nice pristine tools I think I'm reaching the point now to where store-bought stuff it just isn't cutting it if I decide to do work orders but I've almost never done work orders myself um, I did early during alchemy but I stopped it real soon especially when I found out I could sell to people um, but if you want to do work orders around 600 I think it was is when you're gonna start to notice a fall off of quality and then you want to start doing some of your own maybe somebody has better luck than I do but I've never been that lucky I do really hope this video was uh, useful 
to our up and coming crafters, uh, that being carvers. If you happen to have any questions, I'm not super, no I'm more knowledgeable than blacksmithing, but not quite as knowledgeable as um, like what bones do what. So you might have to talk to a true carver at that point. However, if you ever see me in game or on Discord and you need assistance, and not just in carving or if, if anything else, like how to go out and hunt or how to clean your weapons or repair them or, you know, where the bank is or anything like that, you know, you're always more than welcome to pull me aside and say, hey, I need assistance or I have a few questions or hi, you know, I always appreciate a nice hi or hello or good handshake, especially if it's moving out of Pradan. Just no wells, please. <laughs> uh, but, you know, um... I do hope these videos are actually helping people. I do hope you guys enjoy them. If you don't do it yourself, but you know somebody who's up and coming, you know, feel free to share this with them. If I've made any mistakes in any of my videos as well, please let me know. Um, I don't like being wrong, and I don't like handing out misinformation. I, I think that's probably one of the worst things you can do. Or if anything changes, you know, I'll try to update videos um, if anything big changes, I'll try to update them for what I can. Uh, but yeah, I hope your guys' adventures go smoothly. And hopefully the bones don't weigh you down too much because uh, dying sucks. <laughs> but that being said, I hope you all have fun. Until then, see you next time.